Okay, let's talk a little bit about variables and variable types, and then uh, we'll go through some examples and we'll talk about why it's important to figure out what, what type of variable it is. So first of all, variable itself is something that varies. In other words, something that, that could change from time to time or person to person or depending on how you measure it. Uh, if it always stays the same, if it never varies, then it's not really a meaningful variable. For example, if you did a database on all the people at EMU, you might have variables like um, gender, race, uh, SAT scores, things like this. You wouldn't have a variable called planet uh, because everyone's from planet Earth, so it would just be a waste of space. It wouldn't vary. It wouldn't change. Um, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't use that as a variable. So that's variable. There's two main types of variable, quantitative or categorical. And sometimes categorical we can think of as qualitative. Sometimes people call that qualitative or even nominal, sometimes people say. But I'm just going to call it categorical. So the difference between these two is quantitative variables can be measured by numbers in a meaningful way. And when I say meaningful, I mean numbers that can be potentially added or subtracted or at least um, ranked um, um, with the ranking that's a slightly different type that could fit into either category. That's called ordinal data. Um, we'll pause that for just a second. But right now, let's focus on meaningful numbers. So let me give you some example of things that aren't meaningful. Um, phone numbers you wouldn't take the average phone number of a class or sports jersey numbers athletic jersey numbers uh, you wouldn't say the new york yankees what's their average jersey number something like that um, however if we look at things like height weight distance speed uh, number of times that you did something all of these would be quantitative Let's take a look at some specific examples and try this out. I ask um, some students to give me some ideas of, of variables so that we could talk through this. And, and this is the list. So if you want to pause this video really quickly and try to figure out if you think each one is categorical or quantitative, or maybe it's not even a variable. So go ahead and do that now. OK. Um, so some of these are pretty tricky. Uh, how many gallons of gas I used last year? Now, it sounds like a quantitative variable. Uh, it's certainly not categorical. But how many gallons of gas I used last year just has one number. If, it, if it's only me, I don't know what that number is. It might be 372 or 1,024, but uh, it's just a single number. It doesn't vary. Now, how many gallons of gas I use each year or each month or each day, or how many gallons of gas each person used last year, all of these things could vary. Uh, so it's on the right track, but as it's stated right now, it's just a single number, so it doesn't really vary. Uh, same thing for number two. How many times have I procrastinated on doing various things? If I'm just talking in my life, I mean, we'd have to figure out a way to determine what is considered procrastination on something, uh, but it would still be just a single number. Now, how many times have I procrastinated per week on doing things? And you can measure it across several weeks. It may be different, high on some weeks, low on other weeks, or across different people, or how many minutes I spend each day procrastinating. Um, all of these would be variables, and those would be quantitative variables. Uh, mood is another one that it, it's probably leaning more towards categorical if we're talking about like angry, happy, sad, excited, uh, tired, things like these. Um, if you chose any one of those categories, you might be able to kind of put it on a scale of one to five or one to 10, um, how angry you are, how happy you are, uh, how long I spend in a week looking for lost items. So if you're measuring it across several weeks, sure, that would be a quantitative variable. Ratio of males to females I hang out with per day. So maybe like seven to two or 20 to 32. Uh, this is a number, this is a quantitative variable that could change potentially from day to day and person to person. 
Uh, type of laughter, it's a, certainly a variable. There are different types of laughter, believe it or not. Um, quick story. So I was uh, backpacking around India for about six months, and there were these things called ashrams, which were um, basically a little community where someone had an idea for how they thought life should be lived. And um, then anyone who came to live in that community had to agree with whatever these rituals were traditions and some of them were pretty normal i guess like um gandhi gandhi's ashram obviously gandhi has passed away but he still has an ashram so he was much he was into sustainability so anyone who goes to his ashram uh you have to you can only wear the clothes that you make uh you can only eat the food that you grow um each morning you get up really really early in the morning and you uh, honor some of the major religions um it's obviously very peaceful so there, there's a lot of things that gandhi's ashram would do. anyway i i went around and explored several of these ashrams because it was really interesting different perspectives on life and the point of this is there was one ashram uh, that i went to that had these kind of crazy meditations uh, everyone was wearing robes and um, one of them was a laughter meditation where you had to laugh for an hour. So we were in this big pyramid shaped room with maybe 100, 150 people all over the room, everybody in their robes and, and from around the world. So we had uh, Kiwis from New Zealand, we had Aussies, we had uh, people, Germans, French, uh, people from India, of course, South America, all over. And when they rang the gong, everybody had to start laughing and you had to keep laughing for an entire hour. And the funny thing was at the beginning, it was all forced. So you hear like all this, <laughs> but everybody in their own culture has a different way of forcing laughter. And it was legitimately funny to hear everyone uh, doing these laughters in these other cultures. And then people started laughing for real. And then you heard people, different types of laughter, like really high. <laughs> and really like serious chuckles <laughs> and then just kind of crazy hysterical laughter all, all over the spectrum and then it, it was really really funny and by the end of an hour laughter is a intense exercise by the end of the hour i mean we were just exhausted and they ring a gong and you lay down on the ground for 15 minutes no one talks and you just have the echoes of all this laughter uh racing in your head the pretty amazing, amazing experience. So there's certainly types of laughter. I could see that being a categorical variable. Um, and then I, I wrote them out here just for your own benefit. So the red ones, my mood when I'm leaving the practices would be categorical, type of laughter categorical. And then I phrased the other ones so they would be quantitative, kind of like I discussed on the previous slide. So you can see how, how each of those could be measured by a meaningful number. Why does it why does it matter? It's not just a name that we put on things. Um, it matters because it chooses the way that we represent the data. It, cho uh, it, it chooses for us the types of statistical tests we can run. For example, if you have categorical data, uh, you could do a pie chart or bar chart. We'll talk about those later, what, what they actually are. You may be familiar with them. Um, but if you have quantitative data, uh, or if you have quantitative data, yeah, you, you really wouldn't do these two. Instead, you would do um, probably a histogram, stem plot, time. There's other things you could do too. But what you couldn't do is you couldn't take a categorical variable and do a histogram or a stem plot or a time plot or even a line. I didn't mention it here. A line chart is a pretty common one. Uh, a big mistake is taking categorical data and doing a line chart with it um, because it can show trends that really aren't there. So the type of data you choose determines the way that you can represent it. And we'll talk more about these actual representations in a different video.